Hi, Susan. Hi, Selene. Hi. Hi. I'm very excited. We're having. We're going to talk about a topic that is very important here, and that is um, what is love. But but to put it in a context. I feel like I have to deconstruct something about the word love and some very um, deeply ingrained uh, beliefs around the word love. And I think mine also came from this Catholic upbringing. And I I've had to reacquaint myself with the word love. And so I was hoping that you could talk a little bit about that. Oh, yes, this is an interesting topic, Susan, because uh, I realized that uh, in this culture, when you talk about love, people immediately uh, perceive love in a Christian uh, way, um, as a Christian image. But, uh, you see, Love, uh, uh, when I talk about love, I talk about uh, a really natural power, which is everywhere. It is in a flower, uh, in the rain, uh, in the wind, in the sky, in the earth, uh, in a tree, in a, in a wolf. It is everywhere. Because uh, uh, when I think at love, I think at beauty. I have, um, if I can say that, a platonic concept of love. If you, if one uh, read uh, Plato, you say Plato, 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 Plato. Um, if one reads Pla Plato, um, Plato never talks about love. Uh, he talks about beauty and uh, about. Uh, goodness goodness and beauty and um, reading Plato little by, by little you realize that beauty for Plato was exactly what Love is for a Christian. Beauty is the way in which love becomes visible in, in our world. Because love, the true love, is the pure expression of uh, sacred and sacred is the ability that everyone and everything has in this world to give to give himself or herself or itself in order to create above and beyond himself or herself or itself. So love is a, a desire, a desire, a will to create. And uh, this is a divine will. This is a divine desire. The desire of create 
because um, the divine is a is a creative creative act the divine expresses itself in the creation and so love is this act the act of create something of being creative and um, in order to create every creations every creation need a death a death something must die in order to create something else because of the only way to create is uh, pass through the sacred and the sacred is the ability of give itself or himself or herself give themselves in order to create above and below themselves this is love and it expresses as beauty in nature so Selene, in the past you and i have talked and you to just give you a practical a, a, a concrete example um we were talking about black magic and we were talking about um discovering within oneself this element of black magic and you um said that that when you encounter that within yourself you want to be able to love it so it's an active verb right to love it what does that actually mean in, in this non-christian natural way so the christian way that would be you reach out you uh, admire it you hug it i'm not quite even sure you know it's like this active movement to love it right yeah. and and here you're talking more of a of an allowance it's almost like allowing this discovery to transform you yes 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 because uh, you see Christianity brings into existence, or better, enhances, Christianity enhances a lot the sense of I, yeah. which doesn't exist so clearly before. And... Um, this sense of I, um, as a, a, a double face, as a two faces. One is um, the ability of uh, love and give themselves with um, more awareness with more clarity and um, will, willpower. The other phase of uh, the sense of I is me. <laughs> yeah. You see, if you divide, if one divides, 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 separates the sense of I from the power of giving oneself, of loving, the sense of I becomes 
becomes dangerous, becomes dangerous. I love makes sense. I am, I believe, I possess, I have, I do, I make. Doesn't make any sense. It's dangerous. Jesus, Jesus enhance, enhance a lot the sense of I. Because Jesus is an I. But he does that only to announce his ability to love. Jesus is an I, but is an I who loves. After him, after him, the sense of I is remained in the human beings, but they have separated this I, their I, from the ability of loving. And they have joined the I to the to other other actions like uh, I am, I, I have, uh, uh, I know, uh, <laughs> I become, and uh, they have created uh, a word without love. And this word without love is the word that brings into existence pain and suffering. Um, so we have to remind ourselves the true sense of I. And when we say I, we have a not to forget to say love. I love is one word. <laughs> they are not two words. They, it is only one word. I and love are an inseparable. So if we are able to say I with love, we can bring uh, beauty into existence everywhere. Otherwise, we create ugliness, uh, suffer, pain, discomfort, uh, illnesses, uh, uh, troubles. You see, love is the ability of inclusiveness. When you say, I love, you include something or someone within yourself. When you love a flower, you include the flower within yourself. And uh, through love, you can really know what a flower is because you, you perceive it under your skin. And this is the only way to, uh, to reach a true knowledge. Dissecting, analyzing, is not a, a way to reach a true knowledge. It is just dissecting and analyzing, it's not knowing. Wisdom without love is not a real wisdom. <laughs> so um, love is the ability of knowing because it is the ability of inclusiveness. And it is a creative act because when you know through inclusiveness, you become what you know. And becoming what you know, you create something new, something that uh, didn't exist before. This is uh, what is uh, called uh, uh, Trinity, <laughs> the um, Trinity vision uh, or Trinity, how will you say in English? In e Trinity. Trinity, it's correct. So the Trinity vision is the remake <laughs> of uh, the um, uh, 
shamanic three worlds, underworld, middle world, upper world. This is the animistic vision, which uh, becomes in the Christianity, the Trinity vision. And uh, this is the vision of love. When you love something, you become what you love. And this fusion, this uh, melting, this uh, union creates something new. A new you, a new flower, if you are knowing a flower, for instance, and uh, a new reality, a new world. Because knowledge, true knowledge, is always an act of creation and always creates a new world. And when you, when you create a new world, a new yourself, a new flower, you create a new history, a new story, a new, a new story. I mean, uh, your mom, your birth, your uh, dad, your ancestors, even your previous lives are changed by this uh, creative act. Knowledge through love can change everything. And so, in such a way, you discover the true impermanence. Because you see, Susan, reality is not permanent and is not substantial. Everything appears and disappears, like uh, lightning. It appears and disappears, is impermanent. Heraclitus said that uh, a man can't bathe twice in a river. Of course, because the river appears and disappears, and when appears again, it's not the same river. <laughs> It is a new one. So, through love, through love, which is the true knowledge, you reach the power of seeing reality as impermanent, appearing and disappearing. Because through love and through true knowledge, every time you love someone or something, Every time you know someone or something becoming, becoming, sorry, becoming what you are knowing, you completely change yourself, your world, your story. And so you appear and disappear, you appear and disappear continuously. This is the way in which love conquers death. Love can conquer death. Love can vanish death. And this is the way in which it does that. Does it make sense, Susan? Yes, and I have something almost silly to ask you. And that is what the, almost a felt sense of what it means to love. I know that I've had experiences, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, especially after periods of meditation where you can perceive almost like a physical heat coming from, from people. Like they'll look at you and they will emanate or you perceive almost heat. And I have equated that with their emanating love. 
But when I'm listening to you, um, and there is a there is almost like a a way of giving out energy um, that feels like you're giving out quotes love. But when I listen to you, the the experience I get is not one of giving or emanating an energy, but actually of dissolving. So it, it, it's, it, it has a very, it feels different. It feels like you're making room for something. So to say, love this image or love another, is not like the sending out of anything, but almost is like dissolving and allowing and, and allowing to be transformed by the other. If I, does this even make any sense? Oh yes, Susan, and you're perfectly right. I agree, I agree totally because um, when you p perceive heat uh, yeah. from, from, from other body comes from other bodies, uh, uh, you are within your eye, your sense of eye, so you are uh, closed into yourself and you, you perceive from uh, something com coming from outside. Uh, but when you love, there, there is no... Uh, there is no something like an inside or uh, outside. Um, there is nothing like that. When you when 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 you love, uh, there is a, a fusion, a, a deep union. A state of non-duality in which yeah. uh, the subject and the object uh, are two in one, distinct but not separated. This is the non-duality state, a state in which uh, subject and object are distinct but not separated. And this is uh, true love and is a state of uh, beatitude and creativity, and serenity, and joy, um, and, and peace. This is why in, uh, it is uh, usually represented uh, in the esoteric traditions uh, as um, uh, erotic union. Think of Hinduism uh, yeah. at the union of uh, Shiva and uh, Parvati, the divine Shakti or think at uh, um, uh, Gnosticism, uh, the esoteric Christianity, uh, at, uh, and think at the union of uh, Sophia and Christ, uh, or think at, uh, uh, at esoteric Buddhism, uh, where, um, where the main point of reference is not uh, Gautama Siddhartha, the historic Buddha, but the so-called uh, Vajradhara or Vajrapani, the Buddha depicted uh, in the erotic union of his companion. Or think at uh, uh, Sufism, uh, the esoteric Islam, um, uh, with poet like Rumi or Ahmed bin Alwan, who praises the, the carnal love between uh, the human and the divine. So uh, the erotic union is the symbol used by all the esoteric uh, spiritual traditions of the world uh, to depict um, the non-dual state of consciousness. Because this is a state of uh, um, beatitude and joy and, uh, and death, because uh, during the intercourse, uh, the, the partners die, they die 
one into the other. The intercourse uh, is a little death uh, in which uh, all the thoughts, uh, sequences uh, are um, atomized, are burned. Uh, and so is a little death. Love is the same. Love is always a death. But is an orgasmic death through which you create something new. You become something new. You create a new you and a new world. And so love is the very tool of evolution and growing. A knowledge without love is not a true knowledge and is dangerous. And I think in this very moment, in, this, uh, in our age, we need to remind ourselves of love, remind ourselves our ability of loving, because uh, we live in an age uh, uh, of change. Technologies are changing our world so, so quickly. And uh, this is a change uh, uh, a change uh, based, root, rooted in uh, logical and rational thought. If we are not able to grow our ability of loving at the same time, we will, uh, we will find ourselves in a very um, unbalanced world, unbalanced between inner life and outside life, between uh, intimacy and uh, logical, rational thought. And this unbalance can bring maybe, maybe, perhaps a more comfortable life life but for sure will never bring happiness and peace indeed maybe our lives are uh, become more comfortable because of uh, technologies but for sure that we are not more happy we are not more peaceful and happy than in the past. Mm. Love, love and wisdom, what, love and wisdom, love and wisdom should be inseparable. We should not se se divide, we should not uh, separate love and wisdom. And if we had separated them, we should uh, we should uh, put it together again. This is our mission, I think, in this age. This is the mission of uh, everyone. Does it make sense, Susan? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. And it, okay. it, it, thank you, Susan. Thank you to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, inspired questions. You inspire me. You inspire you inspire me a lot always thank you susan
Thank you, Selena. Thanks.